guys, well, we're on the Mocap X website. And uh, as you saw in the demo just now and on their website, uh, you have a full control over your rigged character uh, by using an app on your iPhone. How cool is that, right? Now, uh, there are a bunch of features that I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna show you how you can set this up. I'm gonna show you how to use the demo character, but more importantly, I'm also gonna show you how to bring in external models that are rigged, uh, even your own, and how you can do exactly the same thing, right? So let's uh, dive in and check it out. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Well, as you can see, we're in Maya and we're in Maya 2019 to be exact. Uh, reason for that is that they're working on the 2020 version and I don't want to risk it not being stable yet or anything. I think it's in beta, but 2019 works perfectly fine. Now, what we need to do first is we need to make sure that the Mocap X plugin is activated. But before we do that, I want to give you a quick summary of what's going on here. Okay, so as you saw in the intro clip, um, there is an app that you can install on your iPhone. It's called Mocap X. It's a free app and it will allow you to communicate real time with a, um, a character in Maya. Basically, you move your face, it will move on the screen of your cell phone, it will then communicate to the character in Maya and that um, character will move in the same way at the same time. You can then record that information and then it will be all keyframed and then you basically have a, I would say a primary setup for your character animation. And you can then go in and tweak it and you know work in the graph editor and so forth. So it's a huge, huge, huge time saver. Okay, that said, uh, let's make sure we have the app loaded. I really see it is up here, but I'll just go through the motion to show you guys how to do this. So there are clear uh, installation instructions on the website. I'll put a link below. How to install the app on the phone, how to install the plugin in uh, Maya, and there are also a bunch of tutorials if you uh, need them, right? Okay, so we're gonna click on the Windows. We're gonna go to Settings Preferences. We're gonna go to the Plugin Manager, and I'm gonna search for Mocap, right? And there you go. I have the Mocap plugin loaded, and it's on auto load, so it will load every time. Okay, so we got that going on. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up our demo head. And you're probably wondering, okay, do I always need to work with this demo head? No, of course not. You can create your own models, your own rigs, and then you can set up um, the links so you can control all of that. But for now, we're gonna open up the demo head. So I'm gonna double click on Natalie right here. Or actually, just click once, that's fine. And there you go. Now, the cool thing about Natalie here is she has already been fully synced up. So I believe it's this guy right here. Yeah, the PoseLib editor. So if I open that up, you'll see there's a whole range of uh, stuff that has been set up for her specifically. So if you have your own model and your own rig, what you can use is this as a base reference, right? So you can go in here and you can um, select one of the motions here mimic that on the um, the rig that you have and then that will synchronize with the phone kind of sounds complicated but I'll, I'll show you in a bit right okay but for now let's make a connection so we got Natalie going on here you can uh, control the rig straight up if you want but that's not the point and what we're going to do next is we're going to set up a connection. Now, there's a little iPhone symbol here. Before you click on that, make sure that the app on the phone is running and make sure you're in streaming mode because you have to be in streaming mode to set up that direct connection. Okay. So uh, I set the phone up. It's in streaming mode. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to click on this little iPhone right here. And I think it's open down here, but let's try that again. Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to open up the attribute editor and see if that was successful. Okay. In the attribute editor, we now have a, a tab here where it says real time playback controls. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a connection with the phone. Now you can do this with a Wi Fi connection or click here and use a USB connection. And the USB connection is typically more stable. So that's what I would go for. And, and I'm just blurring out my IP address here because, you know, I don't want you guys to hack my system or whatever. So here's the Wi-Fi option. Here's the USB option. Yeah. 
and uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to click on connect we'll give it a sec connection established down here and what will happen right now is as soon as I pick up my phone and start making funny faces um, the face ID option in the Apple phone will record that and send it to Maya and you should see all the actions that I'm doing being mimicked right here in these bars and then we want to translate that information to Natalie and now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to click on this guy right now this is the mocap uh, postlib editor we'll click on that and then we've got these two little circles right here and that is basically to link them up right so we're going to click on that and immediately you see the blue bars on the right there so if i now pick up my phone and let me just get some cable out here pick my phone and if i look at my phone and start to talk and move and so forth you see the bars moving based on the controls that have been set up so if i open up my mouth you'll see that Natalie in the example is doing exactly the same. So we've got eye movement, we've got eyebrow movement, we've got jaw movement, mouth movement, and so forth. Pretty cool, right? So that's how that synchronization works. Now, let me just put the phone away. As you can see, as soon as we do that, everything kind of calms down a bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can do the same thing, but with a different model than the demo head. Now for that purpose, we're gonna download a, uh, a free a rigged character and I'll show you guys how that works. Okay guys, well, we're on a website called animationstudios.com and uh, that's the website where we're gonna get our rig for our demonstration. So we're gonna go uh, to the download section and then we're gonna go to the example rigs and we can choose one of these right here. And it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but we're going to go with the top one. I think this model is called Claire. There you go. It's a zip file. So what I'll do is I'll unzip that using unzip software, and then we'll open that up in Maya. Right? Here we go. Okay, guys, as you can see, we're in Maya. We're still in Maya 2019. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up our uh, model, the one we just downloaded. So I'm going to go to File. We're going to go to um, Open Scene. And here is Claire. Okay, open that up, and there we go. Loading that up, and boom, there it is. All right, we're gonna jump into our perspective mode. I'm gonna hit six to uh, apply the textures. And the idea here is that we are going to hook this rig up to our mobile app so we can control it. That's the idea, right? So what we need to do first is we need to drag select the controls the face controls like that, okay? And we need to create an, uh, an attribute overview. So uh, I think it's called attribute collection. There we go. We're gonna click on that, right? That is now empty just yet, but it's okay. Uh, that's what we're gonna work with. And we're also gonna open up this guy all the way to the left. Now, that's the pose lip editor, yeah? And we also need this. This is basically the Natalie reference board, like what I like to call it. It's the mocap pose board and it will become clear in a second, right? Okay, so if we look at the right hand side here and we open these up, for example, we have the left eyebrow going up and down, right? In this case, down. Now, that is a movement that is linked via the rig to the application on the phone. Now, we want to do the same movement on this character and kind of link that together, right? So what I would do is I would select the left eyebrow right there, right? And what I would do is I would move that down like that, for example, yeah? And then I would simply click on the plus next to the eyebrow down and make sure we have the left one. Yeah, so simply gonna click right here. As we do that, you see that this has been added right there, which is exactly what we want. Now let's say we want to do something else. We want to drop the jaw. So we're gonna click on the jaw control. I'm gonna hit E, I'm gonna rotate that down and kind of open that up like so until I'm happy with the pose. Then over here in the pose board, we're gonna look for jaw down. And uh, let's see if I can find it, jaw open, that's what it's called, right? Just click on this plus sign so you can see what's going on here. That's the one we want. We're gonna click on the plus sign. It's gonna be added here as well. 
Now, this is what you do going all the way through the model. So let's do uh, one more. Let's uh, see, we'll do, um, I don't know. We'll take the mouth corner right there. So we're just gonna hit W and we're gonna kind of move it up like that, right? Okay, so let's see if we can find that here as well. Um, probably under mouth. And I'm assuming, let's just look here. Yeah, that will be it. We're gonna go with that one. Okay, so we have these three. Now, you're gonna run through your entire rig that way, right? And you only have to do that once. Once you've done that, you have that control, and then you can control it remotely. So we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna minimize that, okay? And now, with this set up, we're gonna establish a connection with our iPhone. So we're gonna click on the phone symbol up here. We're then gonna hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. And here you go, here is the connection again. It's set to Wi-Fi. I'm gonna set it to USB. I'm gonna make sure that my application is running and that it's actually in streaming mode, which is kind of important. I'm going to establish the connection. Connection established, as you can see down here. It's not responding just yet. In order for us to get that, we need to link this up. So hit these two little circles. There you go. So right now you see that the mouth is moving, the eyebrow is moving, yeah? And looking at the, the corner of the mouth, it's moving a little bit, not a lot. I'm making some weird faces here, but you can clearly see the eyebrow moving and the jaw moving. That's kind of the idea, right? Okay, now let's say we have the entire model rigged up and it all looks great and we're all happy and all done, yeah? The next thing you wanna do is you want to get this thing keyframed, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna record an animation that I like. Now, they did a kind of smart thing at MocapX because normally when you start to record, the animation that you get is not the one you wanted. You have to go back and do it again and again and again. Now, what they did is they set up a way where you can record backwards. So right now in this tab here, it says record controls. And I'm first gonna check a location where I actually want it to be saved because I don't want to have that funky path. So it's basically just gonna be there. I'm gonna hit uh, save as Claire. So when I start to record this, it'll be saved as a file called Claire on my desktop, right? Now, instead of 30 seconds, I think something like 10 or so would be okay. And I'm gonna keep on talking so my character is responding and I'm simply gonna click on save clip. All right, so it went back 10 seconds and recorded what I did the last 10 seconds, okay? Now I'm just gonna put the phone away for a sec. And if I now move over to the next tab and go to mocap X right here, I have the option to open the clip reader. When I do that, just above here, and I have the real-time device, which is connected to my phone. And I'll just uh, show you one more time. There you go. And we have this one, which is the clip reader. Now that's the one I want because I want to load that file. So click on the clip reader, click on the folder. We're going to go and find Claire and she will be on my desktop. There she is. And we're going to open that up. Okay. Now you can see it's processing. And let me just tweak the number of frames here. Let's set that to 300 so we can see what's going on, yeah? And you can see the mouth moving. All righty, cool, cool. Okay, we'll let that run all the way through. Okay, and now what you want is you want, let me just stop this, what you want is you want to bake this, so you have keyframes, okay? So in order for us to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag select those controls again, and just uh, try to imagine that you have all the controls done, right? I just did a few, but you have all of them done. So I got this uh, selected, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to bake them. So I'm gonna click on bake, it's gonna to start to run through the keyframes and you can see what's going on right there. You see the mouth moving. All right, 
And now what you see down here is you have all these keyframes that have been created, right? Now, uh, to be honest, I think when I baked it, I only selected the mouse control and not the others. That's why you only see the mouth moving, but it's the, it's the principal accounts, right? So make sure you got everything selected. Now, all of these keyframes are selected. Now, let's imagine that you have to do an animation for a client and you use this mocap, but you don't want the client to see that you use the app, right? Once you're at this stage, you basically have a keyframe animation like any other. So you can go into your attribute editor and you can get rid of everything that has been created for this. So the pose lib, the mocap, as long as you keep your group, you're good, right? And then, you know, you can just say, hey, this is a keyframe animation. That's all there's to it. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how mocap X works. Um, keep in mind, I am not an animator. So if you are, you understand this stuff way better than I do. I think it's a pretty exciting uh, um, combination of apps and plugin. Uh, I'm certainly going to be playing with this more in the future. And I suggest if you like this kind of stuff, you check out the links below. I'll put a link to the website, to the app, uh, and basically everything you need to know. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for checking this out. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and see you guys next time. Bye.